Rosie is a proud Yarra woman, originally from Broome, but she got throat cancer, which not only took away her voice, it threatened to kill her. So in 2014, she had an operation to remove her voice box. Yeah, well, um, I had a bit of cough, so um, I went to the hospital and they said that I had a sore throat and um, it was really red raw. So um, they sent me to Perth to have some tests. Rosie flew to Perth as she was having problems breathing. She had to stay in hospital while she had some tests done. I had my tests done and um, they took some biopsy and a couple of days later the doctor said it was cancer. So they um, said to me that they needed to take my voice box out, and if I didn't have it out, um, get taken out or act on it fast, I would die. Rosie had her surgery a few days later. What was really scared, really frightened, I didn't know what to expect. It was a hard decision, but the hospital staff were happy to help. And there are Aboriginal liaison officers who are here to help too. So if something like this happens to you, there is support. And I've also had um, speech therapists, they was there, and to guide me through what was going to happen and what sort of equipment and what to use, how to talk and how to breathe. When the doctors remove your voice box, they make a hole in your neck. It's called a stoma. After the surgery, you can now only breathe air in and out of this hole. This hole leads to your lungs, so you need to make sure dust, flies or water doesn't go into it. You also need to make sure the hole doesn't close up, as you won't be able to breathe air if it does. I don't breathe to my nose anymore, I breathe to this hole. And that's my button. That button um, keeps the hole open and stops it from closing. I have to have a cover, like my scalp, to stop um, dust. I've also lost my smell, my taste, and uh, from the radiation. Um, I can't go swimming anymore. It's very scary. All this meant that Rosie didn't have a voice anymore, but she would get it back in a different way. I couldn't talk. So I um, had to help with the speed therapist and they gave me this equipment to put there. But I don't need that. I've got a valve inside. And um, that um, taught me to talk and to where I am today. When the doctors do a laryngectomy and create the stoma, they also separate your breathing tube from your food tube. So food can't go down the wrong way. At first you will be fed through a tube in your nose and the doctors will tell you when it's safe to eat and drink normally. The dietitian can help to make sure you get the nutrition you need and the speech pathologist will tell you what food you can swallow. You can then eat through your mouth but it might be a bit tighter in your throat after the surgery. You might need to start by eating softer food or have a drink when you eat to help wash the food down. After my surgery, I was really scared. I couldn't eat. I was um, tube fed. Couldn't breathe. I was on the machine. Um, couldn't shower. The first time I um, had a good feed um, of a rib bone, I couldn't eat it. So I had to mash it up like baby food. And that's the only taste that I can get out of. Having a decent ribbon. She taught me what was right from wrong. While you are in hospital, 
the doctors and nurses will look after you and check that everything is healing well after the surgery. The nurses will show you how to look after the stoma and will provide you with equipment that you will need for the rest of your life. You will need to pay for this equipment, so make sure you have the money. You may also see other staff who check that you are safe to go home. It is important for you to do your exercises to help you recover and stay healthy. It is also important that your family also knows how to look after the stoma and know what to do if you are having problems. Rosie left hospital once she had healed and was able to look after herself. Yeah, when I went back home to Broome, um, when I went to the shops and I talked, and people would have stared at me, and I'd say, what are you looking at? I told my family to, if anything happened to me, if, um, that I'd show them what to do, like if I fell or something, to make sure my storm is clear and there's no dust or rocks or whatever. Yeah, um, when I went um, back home, um, I looked at myself and I said, nah, there's got to be a new me. Maybe the old me was gone. So having this here, it's um, really has changed my life. A few months after the surgery, Rosie needed to have radiotherapy just to make sure all the cancer had been removed. After my operation, um, I had to go to radiation for eight weeks, every day, Monday to Friday. And they gave me a, what do you call it, mask. They had to make me a mask. And that mask was so scary that I was claustrophobic in it. So to relax and get myself right, I had to think of something happy. After the radiotherapy, Rosie returned home. She now lives in Wyndham and comes back to Perth once a year to see the ENT doctors. They need to check that the cancer doesn't come back. Once a year, I have to get my valve changed and I come to Perth and see my speed therapist and my speed therapist changed my valve but for the whole other year, for the rest of the year, I have to look after it myself. If I don't look after it, I'll be in a lot of trouble. Every day, Rosie needs to look after the hole in her neck and the valve. She needs to breathe in steam by using a machine called a nebulizer. She then needs to clean any dry bits of phlegm out of the stoma. She needs to have good light so she can see what she is doing. Rosie also needs to clean her speaking valve and check it is working okay. Ah, all good. Still do the same thing what I used to do. Um, play guitar, play keyboard, do my gardening, party, go shopping, go traveling, visit my families hunting, camping, I do everything except swimming and singing. The